tonight. I want to turn your attention to John 11 and 25. Uh, John 11 and 25. I'm telling you, the resurrection settles the matter tonight. The resurrection of Jesus Christ settles it all. You know, anybody been watching the news, see everything that's going on? We're on the verge of a war, ain't we? Anybody know? But I think to myself what Jesus said. Let not your heart be troubled. Amen? Anybody believe that tonight? I, I hear them talking about nuclear bombs and all these bombs going off. And I think uh, when he says, let not your heart be troubled. He even goes on and tells us at, at a point. He says, but be of good cheer, for I have overcome the world. And I think when I hear these things, Lord, you told us this must be before you come again. I think every time I hear about one of these rumors, oh, he's about ready to show up again. Uh, just another pinpointing of the time that we are in. Uh, but John 11, verse 25, simply tells us this right here. Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. And he, he who believes in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. Did you hear me? Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. Uh, the resurrection settles the matter. Amen. Anybody believe that tonight? The resurrection settles the matter. Heavenly Father, we ask you, Lord, to just touch dear God, Lord, and move upon this service tonight. Anoint me to speak the words you would have me to speak, dear Lord. Uh, Father, we pray, God, Lord, that you just touch dear God, Lord, and move in a mighty way. In the precious name of Jesus Christ, we pray, amen and amen. Uh, this weekend and tomorrow, uh, we celebrate what they call Easter. Easter, what I like to refer to as Resurrection Sunday because let me tell you I'm, what we're celebrating tomorrow is the, uh, is the coming out the death burial and the resurrection of Jesus Christ amen I'm not celebrating a rabbit that's hopping around and handing out eggs but I'm celebrating a risen Savior tonight anybody believe that tonight I, I think about this springtime that we come into and it it, um, it's a beautiful illustration of the resurrection. Uh, so many things that were dead uh, come to life again. Anybody know in the winter there ain't nothing that's it, it budding or blooming, but when it gets springtime, uh, the flowers um, begin to come out. The trees begin to blossom, uh, and you can see new life that is spring that is springing forth. Uh, and I think about uh, how Jesus Christ is the giver of life tonight. Amen. I think about how Jesus Christ uh, settles to matter tonight. Uh, I think about his resurrection uh, and how he got a hold of one uh, and he turned this old dead life around uh, and he began to spring forth a new life in me. Uh, anybody know what I'm talking about? Uh, anybody know what I'm saying tonight? Uh, you know, I look back and for generations uh, they looked for the coming Messiah and his death and his resurrection had been foretold throughout the centuries. Uh, if you go in the Old Testament, uh, you can see the prediction uh, that a Savior was coming into the world. Uh, I tell you, church, I remind you again tonight, uh, the Old Testament uh, was Jesus concealed uh, and the New Testament was Jesus revealed. Uh, the central theme of the 66 books uh, that compile our Bible is Jesus Christ. Anybody know that tonight? Uh, they look for him. Uh, they would be the ones wondering uh, if these prophecies would be fulfilled in their, in their lifetime. Uh, I'm telling you, just as they look for him in their lifetime to come to the cross uh, and that death, burial, and resurrection, I don't know about you, but I'm looking for him to show up tonight at any moment. Anybody know what I'm saying? I'm looking for him to come in the moment in the twinkling of an eye. Anybody know what I'm talking about? I'm looking for him to show up 
up in a world that's full of trouble, in a world that's full of chaos, I know one thing that remains the same, that Jesus Christ is alive tonight, amen? I don't have to be troubled by the new system of this world. I don't have to be troubled by the thoughts of wars and rumors of wars. Why? Because he said, I've already overcome all of these things. You can be of good cheer tonight because Christ is alive. It ain't gloom, doom to despair. If you got the blood, I got hope. I got an assurance. I got a promise. I look and I think, well, we may be in World War III, but I know one thing, it remains the same. He said, I'd go prepare a place for me. If it wasn't so, he wouldn't have told me. He said, because I go to prepare a place for you, I'll come again for you. I tell, I tell my church, I said, either way is fine with me because I know where it ends up at on the other side. I know the finish line. But I'm telling you people tonight, they're going through the motions, don't even know what life is truly about. They're going through emotion not knowing what does, what's going on, have no idea what true living is. Let me tell you, I didn't know what it meant to live abundantly until I got a hold of Jesus, amen? I didn't know what life meant until I got a hold of the king. Anybody been born again? Let me tell you, that's when you know when it's about. But people, they don't know. They don't know. I'm going to preach a message in the morning called Rolling Stones and a Rising Rock. So let me tell you. <laughs> There's a stone that got rolled away and there was a rock that rise that day. Amen. Let me tell you. What we're going to tonight is people wonder what in the world's going on in a world of chaos. I got one thing to remind you, that Jesus Christ is still the resurrection tonight. Let me tell you, this was fulfilled back in this time, and we stand on the solid foundation. We stand on the ground of the resurrection of Jesus Christ, and we know what Jesus said, his very last words, it is finished. Finished. Anybody know what I'm talking about? It is finished. He didn't say it was partly finished. He said it was finished. What are you getting at tonight? Let me tell you, it is finished. I'm telling you the work that he's done, he's left nothing undone. That is All it is required is for us to believe in his finished work. Amen? But too many people don't want to believe in his finished work. Too many people, oh, I believe he might have went to a cross. Well, don't stop short there. Oh, I may have left it. They may have put him in a grave. Don't you stop short there. I'm telling you tonight that Jesus Christ ain't laying in a grave tonight. They can talk about Muhammad. They can talk about Allah, whoever they want to talk to. You go to their grave, you'll find the grave of Muhammad. Amen. You'll find the bones of man. But where is Jesus Christ? He is risen tonight. He has sitting at the right hand of the Father tonight. Oh, what a promise that he's sitting at the right hand of the Father. He's not in a graveyard. He is ascended back. Amen. I said he's ascended tonight. He is alive. Too many times we act like he's still sealed in. Uh -oh. Too many act like he's still in the grave. They act like he's still laying there. Guess what? He wasn't there long. Three days, and he was out of there. Three short days, and he was gone. You know, you can go look around tombstones everywhere. Bodies are laying there. But you'll never find the body of Christ because he come out of there. I told you, if you've ever seen the program, The Shroud of Turan, I talked with in a program in Charlotte, North Carolina. And that's one of the scientists said it went over there. He, he made this comment, I remember. He said, I went over there to prove this thing wrong. 
I went over there to prove there ain't no such thing as Jesus. He said, but when I got out of there, I walked out of there saying, I don't know what kind of power come out of this grave. I can't explain it. It's unknown to man. I believe that. Amen. I don't believe he had a struggle coming out of the grave. I believe he come out of there with authority. Amen. I believe he come out of there showing who he was. Oh, death, where is thy sting? Oh, death, where is thy victory? Amen. Let me tell you tonight. Don't you live like he's still sealed behind the rock and laying in a tomb. You live like he's alive tonight. Amen. You live like Jesus Christ is alive because he is. They want to live like people want to live like. Oh, what hope do we got? Well, if you look at the world, you wouldn't. You look at the things going on in the world, there ain't much hope to find. But I'm not looking at that. I'm looking at the resurrection. Amen. Let me tell you, had Jesus had not risen, can you imagine what it would be like? But we know he has risen. Amen. Think about everything that Jesus marked had resurrection all over it. When he raised up Jairus' daughter, that had resurrection all over it. When he raised up Lazarus, resurrection all over it. When he healed the man with the withered hand, resurrection all over it. When he delivered the demonic, that was resurrection all over it right there. Anybody know what I'm talking about? When he opened the eyes of the blind and caused deaf ears to hear, let me tell you, it had resurrection written all over it. Because when you have an encounter with Jesus, let me tell you, you ain't never going to leave the same. Anybody believe that tonight? That when you have an encounter with Jesus, you'll never be the same. In his ministry, was, in his life and ministry, was restoration, healing, deliverance, forgiveness. But it all boils down to one word, resurrection. Amen. He said, I am the resurrection and the life. Wow. There ain't no other but him. You see, there was people that Jesus resurrected from the dead. You can even go in the Old Testament and see a resurrection. But let me tell you something about those that he resurrected. Those that he resurrected had to die again. You know, Lazarus had to die again. Jairus' daughter had to die again. But Jesus said, I was dead, but now I'm alive, and I'm alive forevermore. In a world that don't want nothing to do with him, I got news for you. They ain't going to get rid of him. He's the resurrection tonight. The very foundation of our faith is the resurrection of Christ. If he had not resurrected, there wouldn't be no need to gather here. Did you hear me? Paul even alluded to this in 1 Corinthians 15, 20 through, 12 through 20. Now if Christ be preached that he rose from the dead, how say some of you among you that there, say, there is no resurrection of the dead. But if there is no resurrection of the dead, then Christ is Christ not risen. And if Christ be not risen, then our preaching is vain, and your faith is also vain. Yea, and we also, we are false witnesses of God because we have testified of God that he have raised up Christ whom he raised not up. If so be that, that the dead rise not. For if the dead rise not, then, Christ, then is not Christ raised. And if Christ be not raised, your faith is in vain. And yet you are in your sins. Then they which are fallen asleep in Christ are perished. If in this life only we have hope in Christ, we are all of men most miserable. But now is Christ risen from the dead and become the first fruits of them 
that slept. Then he goes on to say in Colossians 1 and 15 that he's having spoiled principalities and powers. He made a show of them openly, triumphing over them in it. I got news for you tonight. We're not here in vain. Amen? We're not here in vain. We are here because we know he come out of that grave. Did you hear me tonight? We are here because we know that he come out of the grave. He put a show, he put a whipping on the devil. He's alive. If he hadn't been risen, we wouldn't have no hope. But because we're risen, he's risen, we've got an assurance tonight. We've got a hope. One of my favorite songs is, I like to hear, there ain't no grave going to hold this old body down. Anybody know what I'm talking about? I'm telling you. told somebody one time, I said, when he comes to rapture the church out of here, he's he going to blow a trumpet so loud, it's going to be loud enough to wake the dead. Anybody know what I'm talking about? It's going to be loud enough. <laughs> Them old bodies going to be reunited with that soul and spirit, and they're going to put on that glorified body at that point. Where do you get that, preacher? I'm telling you, we got a hope tonight. I'm telling you, this world ain't my hope, but my hope is in the resurrection. Amen? My hope is in Jesus Christ. I, I'm telling you, you think you've lived down here. You ain't started living until you reach the other side. You don't know what life is about when there comes a point where you don't have to worry about a doctor's office. Amen? There comes a point where there ain't no more disease, no more aging, no more problems. Let me tell you, have you ever thought about a world without chaos? without problems, without trials and tribulations. I know in this world we got them, but I can tell you because he has risen, we've got a place where it's free of all of that. He is the resurrection. Without him, he's the first fruits of it. I'll die no for more. I'll go on. Authority. He made a show of Satan on that cross. Hell thought they had him. Oh, death thought they could hold him down. But they wouldn't be no problem. But the king slew him. Amen. The king showed him who he was. I'll tell you one of my favorite little stories in the Bible, and I've told many times is the, sto- the conversation between Satan and death. Satan approached death. He said, I've got one I need you to hold down. And death said, there ain't been one yet I couldn't hold down. Satan says, are you sure? There's something different. And death says, I told you, Satan, there ain't one yet that I couldn't hold down. There ain't one yet. But Satan said, death, there's something different about this one. Death said, bring him on. I'll hold him down. Satan said, all right. Here he comes. And death began to say, Satan, there's something different about this one. Satan, I have no power over this one. Satan, I can't hold this one down. The one I'm talking about tonight was the one we know as Jesus Christ. How many know death could not hold him? Hell has been defeated. Amen. And he's alive forevermore. He's the resurrection. Excuse me, I get a little excited, but I can't help but to think about him, amen? I feel like there's fire in my feet. He's the resurrection. He's the only one that can change lives tonight. I've heard people say, a leopard can't change its own spots. A leopard can't. But the Creator can. Amen. They can't change it. But the resurrection one can. Amen. 
Oh, I heard them say, they can't never change. Maybe not in their own power, but you get them one encounter with Jesus, let me tell you, they'll change, amen? You can't help but to change when you had an encounter with Jesus Christ. That old dead man becomes a living man again. He becomes that resurrection. People don't want want to accept the resurrection. But let me tell you tonight, I'm living proof of the resurrection. Anybody else in here living proof? If you've been changed by him, you're living proof that he is the resurrection. You know what Jesus said? He said in John 10 and 10, I am come that they may have life and life more abundantly. Wow. The world thinks they got life. They don't know what joy is until they get a hold of Jesus. I believe he gives an abundant life down here. Let me tell you, I start thinking about that place up there a lot. Anybody else with me? I start thinking about that place called heaven. I get a little excited, amen? I know we got abundant life up here, but I believe Jesus wants us to have abundant life down here. I believe he wants us blessed. I believe he wants us to be joyful, amen? I believe he wants us to have a joy, amen? I believe he wants us to have a peace that suppresseth all understanding. Let me tell you what gives a man that peace, what can give you that joy, what can change a man is the one that we call the resurrection. You know, Mary and Martha said, we know you're the resurrection. There's one coming to pass. But Jesus said, no, I'm the resurrection of right now. He said, they knew he was the one of the future, but Jesus said, no, I'm the resurrection of now. He was the resurrection of yesterday. He's the resurrection of today, and he is the resurrection of tomorrow. Don't forget that. One of the stories that gives me a good picture of the resurrection is in Numbers chapter 17. There was a division and contention of the right to the priesthood. So God said that he would choose the one. He would make his choice known in such a way it would put an end to dispute of confusion. Number 17, 2 says, Speak unto the children of Israel and take every one of them a rod according to the house of their fathers and of all their princesses according to the house of their fathers, twelve rods, Write there every man's name upon his rod. And thus shall write Aaron's name upon the rod of Levi. For one rod shall be the head of the house of the fathers. And thus shall lay them up in the tabernacle of the congregation before the testimony where I will meet with you. And it shall come to pass that the man's rod whom I shall choose shall blossom. And I will make to cease from the murmurings of the children of Israel, whereby they murmur against you. Going on down into verse 8. And it came to pass that on the morrow Moses went to the tabernacle of witness, and behold, the rod of Aaron for the house of Levi was budded, and brought forth buds and bloomed blossoms and yielded almonds. And Moses brought out all the rod from before the Lord unto all the children of Israel. And they looked, and they took every man his rod. And the Lord said unto Moses, Bring Aaron's rod again before the testimony to be kept for a token against the rebels. And that thou shalt quit, quiet, take away their murmurings for me, that they died not. What is the point? The resurrection is the final word. Uh Uh-huh, yeah. Oh, that's the good news. Because it don't matter what the devil has done. It don't matter what the doctor has said. It don't matter what the circumstances in your life are saying to you. Everything you can see and feel may speak death. But I want you to know God's got the final word. Amen. And that final word is resurrection resurrection will settle the matter amen and i'm talking about jesus amen think about it yes sin kills drugs kills adultery kills lust and perversion kills disease kills but let me tell you 
There's one that gives life, and his name is Jesus. Amen? Why sin kills Jesus Christ to come to give life. Let me tell you, he's not only resurrected from the dead, he is the resurrection. We need to think about that. Amen? We need to think about it, who we serve in the night. Jesus told him right there in John 20, 11, 25, 26. Jesus said unto her, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. John 14 and 19, because I live, you shall live also. Amen. I think there's some room for shouting. Let me tell you, no matter what you can going through, you can be resurrected tonight. Your dreams can be resurrected. Amen. Your health can be resurrected tonight. Amen. Anybody know what? Your finances can be resurrected tonight. Ministry can be resurrected tonight. I don't know. The devil may be telling you one thing, but I got another note for him. Remind him of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Amen. Some of you need to remind the devil. You may throw this at me, but I know the resurrection. Amen. You may throw death my way, but I know the resurrection. Amen. Anybody know what I'm saying? It may look bad and the devil may be having his part, but I know the resurrection of life. Anybody else know the resurrection? The devil likes to give the bad, don't he? The devil likes to give things. That will destroy. He wants you to see death, but I see life. Because why? Because I know the resurrected. I tell people, I'm hurrying. My church is going to get a couple of services away from me. <laughs> Listen, I'll get it in tonight. The devil wants you to have the bad, he wants you to see death, he wants you to smell death. Anybody know what I'm talking about? He wants to write your tombstone. He wants to put the rock in front of it. He wants to seal you there. He wants to have it guarded. But guess what, devil? I know the resurrection. Hey, Amen. You say, well, my situation's beyond help. Has God told you it was over? Amen. Has God said it was over? Let me tell you, there ain't no hopeless situations, only hopeless people. All things are possible. Well, you don't know how long this thing's been stinking and decaying. You don't know how long I give up. Let me tell you something. He knows something about graveyards. Amen. He knows something about graveyards. Go look in Ezekiel 37, the Valley of Dry Bones. I know it's talking about Israel. Look how he brought it together. Let me tell you, look how he went to Lazarus' tomb and called Lazarus forth. He knows something about graveyards, amen? Like I told you, the best news I ever got come from a graveyard. He didn't come from a government agency. It didn't come from places you expect to find good news. It come from a place where you didn't expect to find good news. But it breaking news. He is not here, for he is risen. He points again that he is the resurrection. No matter what it is you think so far away, no matter how far you think it's gone, I want you to know tonight that he's still the giver of life. He's still the resurrection. Amen. In a little bit on my morning service, you may be praying for someone you know sin's got a hold of them. The grip of sin is strong, and it may seem like they're bound, but I got news for you. When the resurrection gets a hold of them, the grip of sin's going to be broke. Amen. 
the grip of sin, the chain of sin is going to be broken. Because let me tell you, Christ is alive tonight. You say, I got sicknesses. The doctors say they can't do nothing about it. Well, Jesus Christ is the great physician. Amen. Amen. Let me tell you, I've t I, I like this. You go to a doctor's office. Their, their license is to practice. Notice that, practice. And it really scares me when they're talking to you and they're looking in a book trying to diagnose you. <laughs> Nowhere in the Bible do I see a license to practice from Jesus. Amen? He had to cure. Amen? Doctors, even though I know God uses them, in their smartness, they've never been able to take a man from decaying, smelling rotten, laying in a tomb, and raise him up. But Jesus can, amen? Amen? Just one touch. Why? Because he, the resurrection. I don't care what it's got. Cancer is not greater than the king, amen? It's not greater than the resurrection. Heart disease is not greater than the resurrection of Christ, amen? Your problems ain't greater than him. Let me tell you, you got a giant in front of you. Let me tell you what you do tonight. You remind that giant, you got your spear, you got your sword, you got your shield, shield but I got the I'm coming to you in the name of the Lord. He is the resurrection. <laughs> so, what are you saying, preacher? I'm getting ready to cut it. That Jesus Christ is our hope tonight. His word settles this matter. And that word is resurrection. Let me tell you, this world's getting more wicked by the day. I don't know what's going to happen. We're just, the way I understand, we're just, any moment, we could be in a world war with masses going on. It could trigger everything around the world. Nuclear war. It's being thrown around left and right right now. Something's a go brewing. That's all I know. We're probably, I'm just going to be honest with you. We probably don't have no idea being told half of what's going on over there. But I know one thing. He's still the resurrection. And I know what he said. Don't let your heart be troubled. In fact, he said, this, when you see all of these things, you can look up because guess what? Your redemption, your redemption draweth nigh. I tell the church this, and I'm going to tell you again. The signs are there. I'm no longer looking at the signs. I'm listening for a trumpet. That's how close it is. I don't know when, but I know everything that he said is right there. He is the resurrection. I'm going to close this out with a prayer tonight. Whatever you have need of, let me tell you. Remind, he's the resurrection. Sickness, he's the resurrection. Pain, he's the resurrection. Trouble, he's the resurrection. Whatever it is, he's the resurrection. Don't let your heart be troubled. In fact, he said, be of good cheer. Can I tell you what you can be a good cheer of tonight? I've got heaven awaiting for me. Amen. I've got heaven awaiting for me. I got Jesus Christ awaiting for me. Amen. I got a king awaiting for me. Amen. That's the reason we don't have to be a good. We can, don't let our hearts be troubled. This is temporary. He's eternal. After all is said and done, I'm going to tell you this much. When it's all said and done, you know what we'll all say? It's been worth it all. It's been worth it all. When we reach heaven's shores, it will all say, it's been worth it all. Anybody believe that tonight? When you get that first glimpse, you'll say, it's been worth it all. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for this opportunity to be in this, your presence. 
God, I pray, Lord, for those that's fighting ailment, sicknesses, Lord, whatever it is, they be reminded that you're the resurrection. Amen. I pray tonight, Lord, let the heart not be troubled, but let them be of good cheer because you've already overcome this world. You've already overcome everything. That their tomorrow is your yesterday. And you've already been there and already went through it. Father, we pray, Lord, for each one in here, God, that you touch. Touch this member of the band that's fighting this sickness, God. Reach down with healing powers right now in the name of Jesus. Lord, we believe it to be done. Father, we pray for everyone in here, and we give you the glory, the praise, and the honor. In Jesus' name we pray, amen and amen.